Hello. Good afternoon. Good evening. Hope you're all well. Yeah. Um, right. I'm just going to do a little bit of checking as all as we always do. I'll spin that round. Always check everything out before we get started. Yeah. Uh, all sounds fine. Seems fine. Um, different angle that we've got on the camera. That's Thomas Woodcarver just firing up as well on the on the bandsaw in the back. And um, the reason for that is because I got a new tripod and it can do some interesting different angles. So hopefully it's a good angle. The lighting may be different as well because we got a new light. So yeah, let us know in the comments section. Perhaps you think it's a terrible idea. Perhaps you think it's an improvement, but we always try different things. So hopefully um, it is an improvement, but let us know your thoughts. What we've got in the um, scroll sort, we have the daffodil fridge magnet that I was planning on making last week. I didn't get round to it because um, we had a special guest in Deb and uh, it was lovely speaking to her and we were yeah busy chatting and I didn't have time to do this one. And then also I've got one of the dog line art coasters as well. So if I do get time, I'll cut that one out. But that's the plan for today. A couple of simple little projects, fun to do again. We just demonstrate the process that we go through. Right, what we're going to do as well, we're going to um, use our usual process where we cut out all of the pierce work first of all. So to prepare it, we've stacked three layers. We've sanded the bottom nice and flat. We've used the pillar drill to drill the holes in our item and we're going to cut it out. Any questions or anything, feel free to ask. Um, any thoughts, feel free to share them with everybody. Hopefully, yeah, I've just seen some of these comments in there. Henry Scroll Saw Works 69. Hello, darling. Hello, Henry. Thank you for joining us. Uh, yeah, great to have you with us. Hope you'll enjoy. And uh, yeah, here we go. Let's do some scroll sawing. For anyone who's interested as well, the blades that I prefer, um, although there are, there are a few blades I use, the main one I prefer is the Niqua blade. The main one I use is the number nine, Reverse Tuff. There's a Niqua Pebeco. I've used that a little bit and really enjoyed working with it and we'll be ordering some more soon. So that's another one that I like. And basically, I do enjoy working with Niqua blades. One thing we get asked about is um, uh, the uh, Flying Dutchman blades. Basically, I've tried Flying Dutchman blades. I actually think they are literally the same blade. I reckon they're probably even made in the same factory. Uh, they're just given a different name and put in a different packet because we don't see Flying Dutchman blades here. You get them more in the uh, the US across the pond, as they say. And um, yeah, I pretty much think they're the same blade. So that's what I recommend using is either Flying Dutchman or Niqua blades. Uh, as we may have seen on our channel, we've done blade trials with uh, Pegasus blades too. Good blades, I just find in the Hegner they slip out of the holder. So yeah, just a, a few thoughts. Another thing as well, I've remembered to do it this week. The plate, where is it? Let me try and find it, here it is. So that plate, that would normally go on the base of the scroll saw. I take it out for these small items, so the blocks of wood that you cut away drop down. So just a few little thoughts. A few ideas to get started. Uh, they are by same company. There we are. Same thoughts to myself. Yeah, um, same company. Just I, I, I wonder, it's like us with the cars here. We have Vauxhall instead of Opal. Same car, basically, but uh, they call it a different thing. So there we are. We shall, uh, we shall get started on that. Anyone interested as well? Thomas the Woodcarver's coming past. We just share what Thomas the Woodcarver's up to. Um, you've got a piece of wood there. Shall I show everyone? Yep. There we go. So Thomas the Woodcarver, he's got a piece of maple. We've got a, uh, a, a, a love spoon that we're working on that is, uh, it's got the maple leaf on the top, a bit of a Canadian link. And so he's just cutting out that one, preparing the wood ready for, for that project. I'll pop that one just on the, on the bench for you. There we are. So that's enough talking from me. Let's get cutting.
If you're wondering what I'm doing, I've noticed this happens from time to time. As I'm cutting out, I can hear an extra noise. So you're wondering what's causing that extra noise. And what it is, just underneath the scroll saw, there's, um, there's a plastic sort of holder bit and um, somebody's pushed it up. My son, he loves to come in and fiddle around with the different things. So uh, he would be, uh, I'm not blaming him, but he would be my uh, highest on my list of um, possible for doing that one. But it's just been pushed up and that's why you've got that extra noise. So um, I always, when I'm scroll sawing, always very aware um, or try to be very aware of any additional noises like that because it can be an indication of something not quite right and if the setup is not perfect, yeah, if it, you know, let's say for instance you haven't put the blade holder in properly on the bottom, you can end up cutting at an angle and it just causes you problems as you're going along. So if you notice something like that, just spend a moment and try and figure out what is going on. It can be a little piece of wood even stuck. As I was cutting out here, there's a piece of wood stuck um, can cause that. I'll just check as well the comments. I can see a few more joined us. Good afternoon, hope you're all well. Uh, are Olsen blades good? Um, I can comment on Olsen blades. I've never used them, but anyone who's got any thoughts, the carver's here. Um, right, Olsen don't last as long. Yeah, that's just me. Yeah, I, I, I would, okay, I've been using Pegasus blades. Uh, they dull quicker and break a lot more blades. I'm in Canada. Yeah, I mean, basically, there's a couple of things when it comes to blades. There's a lot of personal preference with it. I find Pegasus blades, like they're, they're really good blades, but they're really frustrating. I have to sand the ends to stop, stop them slipping out the holder. So for me, you know, instead of buying Pegasus blades, I go for the, um, for the, the, um, the Nikwa ones, which are also the same as the, um, the, the, the Flying Dutchman. So have a look at what's available. Olsen, yeah, I've never used them. I, I, I'll be honest with you, I, I've always sort of, I'll have to get hold of some. Um, I'm, I'm not going to comment on it, but I always thought that they were a little bit, um, they were a bit more reasonably priced in some ways. So I, I thought that basically, rightly or wrongly, that the Nikwa and Flying Dutchman blades may be just a little step up, but I may be wrong. Uh, and they're also more widely available. I'm basically, I'm def uh, buying mine from the Nikwa factory in Germany itself. I got a question for everyone as well. Oh, I'll check, have I missed something? I use those um, to the, those are more brittle. I use Flying Dutchman Ultra Reverse for thicker wood, and I use the, the Nine Reverse. That's for cutting inch, inch and a half. I, I get mine from Wooden Teddy Bear. Yeah, I bought my, um, I bought, I, I, here in the UK, that is a good company actually. I'm glad you mentioned that because I always forget to mention them. If you're in the US, the Wooden Teddy Bear Company, they're a really good company. They sent to me here in the UK, no fuss, quick delivery, no issues with customs or anything like that. Yeah, really good company. And if you're in Canada, I would have thought the, the Wooden Teddy Bear Company, I would have thought you'd be able to get from them and they're selling the, the Flying Dutchman blades. A question as well for everyone. Um, we're using like a, hand, uh, like a hand drill in a frame for drilling our holes. Um, I'm, I'm thinking of getting a new drill press. Just interested in, in what drill presses or what drills, hand drills, what do you use yourselves for, for cutting out? In terms of the wood, uh, this one we're using that, it's that fragrant seed you call it. I, I've always known it's Savina, they call it in Spain, where I get it from. And um, we, we, when I've translated it, it translates as juniper. I've actually got 110 kilos that hopefully I'm going to get sent from Soria in central Spain to the UK. I filled out all the customs declarations and they want to know how much is it worth. And I said about three pounds a, a, a piece because until I've done something with it, it's basically firewood. So it's no use to anybody much. Um, so we'll see if it makes it here. But yeah, any thoughts on that will be uh, be interested in. I just bought my first scroll saw three weeks ago. I bought a King Industrial. So far, so good. Glad to hear it. Hope you're enjoying it too. Um, yeah, in terms of blades, those are those are some of the ones that I I've worked with. Those are the three that I've tried the most, Pegasus, Flying Dutchman, 
and Nick were flying Dutchman and, and um, Nick were same blades. Um, I use mainly the number nine reverse tuff. Um, I've used number 12. Thing is, is that it's because it's slightly wider, I found it more difficult. I was burning more with the back of the blade with the number 12 because I'm used to that number nine. Um, but yeah, try just try a few different ones. If you can get small, small quantities, try them, see what suits you best. Don't ask me about spiral blades because they're not my forte.
me just pause a minute. Let's see what oh, we missed a few comments there. Um, I go, where can we find locally at sawmills? And this is at the USA. Purple, pop, poplar, red, or white oak, fantastic. Um, oh, I remember Aubrey sending me a fascinating video about, I think it was the white oak um, with, the, with the barrels and the, the, the pigeons, how it's changed, even changed the color of the forests. Worth finding that one on YouTube, very interesting. I think, is it the carrier pigeon? Um, yeah, really interesting one. Uh, it's all good information I'm reading, and I appreciate good conversation while it's testing, absolutely. So keep it up. Um, it took me a long time to figure out trial and error it cost. Just wondering as well, um, from Henry, yeah, what sort of things do you enjoy making? What do you, what, what sort of things do you make mainly? Always interested in those. Um, hey, we've got Ken, hello Ken. Um, what's occurring? That sounds proper Welsh, that does. Thanks for joining us, hope everything is well. Uh, I use a Dremel in a stand as a poor man's drill press, but it does the job, fantastic, yeah. Yeah, I, it's a popular, that's a popular one, using the, the Dremel in a press. Um, I use a drill press and a, dre and a Dremel with router base. Yeah, fantastic. Um, we're talking blades and techniques at the moment. Um, yeah, so it's, it's interesting. And again, anybody else as well, be interested in it. What, what do you enjoy making? What sort of things? Um, and on that subject, i got to ask the carver. Uh, was the love spoon well received? The love spoon that you've made, the carver's been working on a, a, a new new love spoon, new design. Um, yeah, was it well received? Hopefully, uh, I hope so anyway. And um, yeah, be good to know uh, any feedback that was given on it. Um, I'm looking forward as well. Did you manage to film it all? Is there a video to follow? Because if anyone hasn't had a look, check out the Carver's channel. Some nice tutorials, some nice video demonstrations of the process that he uses. Right, we're going to finish off this pierce work now, and then we're going to cut that surround.
And let's just pause again before we cut out that outline. The lustrum was very well received. Fantastic. There will be a video. Brilliant. Please share the URL when it's on YouTube, Mr. Carver. Absolutely. Yeah. Have a check out of the Carver's channel. We'll have to put a link in uh, the description of some of the channels. Um, so we've got on there, uh, depending on the size of the piece I'm cutting. Right, that's what I'd be interested to know, is, is what, what are the sort of things that you enjoy the most making? Ourselves, myself, I would say I enjoy, I basically, I would say what I'm mainly cutting is small gift items, because I'm making them to put on our workshop, put in our workshop here and, and sell them. So I make a lot of fridge magnets, key rings, placemats, candle holders, love spoons, that's what the workshop is, is based around. Um, yeah, but those sort of gift items, letter racks, uh, letter openers, any little sort of simple gift ideas, that's mainly what we're doing. Coasters, did I mention coasters? Yeah, those, those are about the most popular things that I do. Do make a few toys, but generally I don't sell the toys that we make. I usually keep them for display. And other things that I enjoy making, cartoon um, stuff. So over the years, I've done all sorts of different cartoon characters and computer game uh, characters. But of course, you can't sell them because of the copyrights, or I don't anyway. Right, let's cut this around. One thing that you're not getting when you're watching as well is the other you need the, not television you need smell a vision because the fragrance of that particular wood is fantastic get a beautiful perfume uh, when you're working in that one there so just checking over the three layers they're pretty good what I will do where you've just got that little lump there where it releases uh, from the, uh, the surround, so when we're cutting it out of the surround, I put that on the belt sander. I always think anyone working with the scroll saw, the belt sander, really useful piece of kit to have because it, it just allows us to refine that finish wherever you need it to. Other than that, the internal cuts, the pierce work, the, the Hegner combined with the, uh, the Niqua blades certainly gives you a nice finish. So, that's the preparation done on that one. I'm going to move that across to the workbench. I'll check to see if I've missed anything. I'll also have a drink of my tea as I'm going along. Uh, let's have a little look. Uh, I like make, making Christmas ornaments. Yeah, that's another thing that we do. Uh, and pictures of certain animals that, that don't argue. Fantastic. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Um, uh, Christmas decorations, that's probably our, our best seller when it comes to scroll, pure scroll sorting. I, I've been in, I, I got a few, when it comes around to it, I got a few um, videos ready for some of the Christmas decorations we do. Uh, I've been doing like a 3D style. Uh, you'll see some of them on our shorts. Um, and they're, they're a great, great seller to be honest with you. Oh, boys. 
I think Thomas will look over his, have you got something to show everyone or you? Uh, there we are. There we are. So you'll see what he was starting off with. So that's the, that's the piece of maple that he's now got and he's also uh, prepared us some mahogany as well. Nice bit of mahogany. So uh, looks like a piece of sapili, is it? I believe so. It only came in. Oh, this was the mantelpiece, was it? Yep. Ah, so somebody's given us a, a mantelpiece, so ideal. Great for, for making all sorts of different things from. Just well, take the finish off and... I'll sell uh, this one down. And brilliant. Stick. There we are. Right, yeah. let's carry on demonstrating. We've got... I may have demonstrated this one before. I can't remember. I know I've done a short of it, but this is a little um, a dog coaster. And um, slightly different technique. So instead of doing the pierce work ready for doing the wood carving afterwards. In this one, there's no carving and the pierce work is, it creates that line art effect. So cuts that outline. Uh, Di looked at Steve. Have I looked at Steve Good's work? I'm well aware, no, Steve Good, he is like the, um, he's he's one of the leading lights um, in scroll saw. And yeah, I, I, I tell you where I come across him. Um, I, I am on a page, and I very rarely post on there, but it's always interesting to see what people are up to. Um, I'm on a page called uh, Scroll Saw Patterns, something like that. And um, every now and then I share the odd item and you know tell people that there's patterns for free on our website. I've never, let me think, have I ever been on, I've never actually looked at any of Steve Good's um, patterns myself i may have been on his website just to have a little look what he's up to um but i've never actually made any of his items and i've never looked at any of his patterns simple reason for it i always think that designing is one of the best parts of what um of, of what you can do then when working with wood because if you're if you design it yourself it gives it that individual um that individuality about it and it, it makes it even more important then and striking for yourself and more rewarding because you know that you've done everything from the design to the finished product so rightly or wrongly <clears throat> it's all your own work and for us here if it doesn't sell then there we are you've only got yourself to blame um, what I would say though is yeah what a fantastic thing that Steve Good has done um, they've given, you know, he, if it is just him alone, fair play to him. Um, from what I've seen, he must have, I've seen so many different things made and so many different items that people have made over the years that are Steve Good patterns. Fantastic, fair play. Um, and some beautiful work, some really clever ideas. And um, yeah, great, great, great thing to think that he's helped so many people with their scroll sawing and to, to get into scroll sawing. Um, small net stick stand figurines are my favourite thing to carve. Yeah, no, no, you do some beautiful, um, some of the figurine stuff that you do. Have trouble trying to design patterns, but I don't know how to get started. We've done a few videos on that. Um, I'm a carver first and scroll saw has been incorporated out my carving process. Yes, same here. I was a wood carver and a, a lead spoon carver primarily. And now the uh, the scroll saw is, has played a bigger and bigger part. Right, when it comes to designing, perhaps perhaps we can do um, something sort of simple. We've got a lot of designs. Um, I mean, basically, something like this. What I would do is I would get an image. Like this was an image that I had off Google. To give you an idea of the dog pattern. And then what I do is I look then, how can I adapt it in the line art style, you know, to create that, to create that effect. So I'm working out which bits to take away and which bits to add on. We use simple techniques of symmetry and things like that. So, um, I mean, designing, it's one of those things. I just think, yeah, have a go and, and enjoy it. Start simple and, and develop from there and use images and ideas and sort of develop it. But for me... Um, it's one of the things I enjoy the most really is, is designing because you can create so many unique things.
Whilst Thomas Woodcarver's here, here we go. In between times, we're talking designing. Because there's a, I mean, Dad, now you wouldn't, you wouldn't even know about that one. There's a gentleman by the name of Steve Good, and he gives out loads of free templates, and loads of people use his templates. Really, you know, some good ideas and things like that. But um, we have um, Henry here, and he's saying about how he finds um, the designing quite challenging. So here we go. Let's give out a few of our top tips for designing. I would say the first thing, we use a lot of symmetry. So the first thing we do, we draw a line on the piece of paper, straight line, and then design from there. We also, we use a light box. Yeah, so we can, I mean, you can trace things out. If I get a piece of paper. Yeah. Um, and and it's, it is basically use images and ideas around you. Like we, we start from an idea. So for instance, dogs, cats, popular items. So you can get an image of a dog or a cat and then work from there and think, how can I develop it? Let's look. He designs scroll saw patterns from pictures he finds and gets permission to use pictures to make scroll saw patterns. Have fun, guys. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Similarly, similar to what we do, that's the first thing. Yeah. Piece of paper. Yeah, yeah. So you'll see, Fold there we it. are. Now another thing, that's an interesting point. That's an interesting point about uh, photos. Everybody's got a mobile phone now. If you take a photo of a flower, you can put that on the computer, you can print that out, you can trace around that. Yeah. That is your copyright photo. Yeah. So you can use an image. If you've got, if you want to do somebody's dog or cat, take a photo of it, print it out on the computer. There's program like Photoshop. There's a tool on Photoshop called the Threshold Tool, and it turns your image into a black and white outline, yeah. and you can increase and decrease the threshold. You can you can just copy it from from that sort of thing. But as I was saying, what we we do a lot of take a take a piece piece of paper like that. Um, you can copy that round half, half. Yeah. Of it. So, for instance, if we were designing something like that, love spoon there, we would copy half out. Um, I tell you what, can you can you pass me a pair of scissors? Because just to give you a really quick, simple idea, this is back to um, this is back to this is back to the primary school um, stuff. But it shows you how um, how simply. Um, let's say, for instance, uh, we were going to design. Try and get it in the camera shot for you. Let's say, for instance, we, design a spoon. we were going to design a Christmas decoration, and I was going to do, um, let's say, a bell. So all I do, there we are, just like that, and then we cut across, like so. Let's put the clapper on there. Boom. So just like that. And then we cut the inside out. Um, so this is why, yeah, this is why you'll never sort of see me using other people's designs and stuff like that. It's because basically you, you can just do it yourself. And I dare say, you know, people probably have seen stuff and probably say, oh, that looks like such and such. It quite possibly does because, you know, but it, Always simple ways well, of doing of it. The there you go. Look at that. Design. Oh, it's infinite. That's why we do all of our own designing because there you go. Simple little bell like that. Um, you could put a little bit on the top so you've got something to hang it on. But there you go. And That's you put a, a clanger on the bottom. There it is. There you go. Yeah. So it's, it's as simple, simple as as simple as that. There's a simple way to design. Only a, only a thought, only an idea. I'm new at this. Uh, why? Am I using saws with the pin in them? Um, that's basically because your scroll saw takes pinned blades. So the advantage of what we use, a pinless blade, is that you can drill finer holes. There's nothing wrong with pin blades. Um, pinless blades as well. Again, correct me others if, uh, if my knowledge is not right on this one but my understanding is that you do have more options when it comes to pinless blades and you know generally speaking pinless blades are regards a bit more professional however if you're new to this and you're getting going with it the pin blades you can do loads of work with them you can do a good job with them there's so many different things that you can do so there's no sort of right or wrong 
If your machine takes pin blades, great. All you have to do is to drill a slightly larger hole. It means that something like this, the line art may be a little bit less suitable for, but there's ways around that. You can just make your whole project bigger to accommodate the pin blades. But that's all it is, is you've got a scroll saw that takes pin blades. You may find as well, some of those scroll saws have adapters so you can take pinless blades as well. So find out about your individual machine. It, it, it usually comes down to that, is that you're, yeah, you're using a machine that takes pin blades, but if you want to use pinless blades, you may find that there is a way of, uh, of adapting. See if I could reverse all the way back, but it's not going to do that. We take that blade up. All it is, we're just going to try and clean up at the top a little bit more. Although in fairness, that is quite a clean cut. Basically, what I'm trying to do to do here now at the top is to just disguise where I drilled the original hole. That's all I'm trying to do. Just trying to cover it up a little bit more. Thank <laughs> you. 
So as I go along, you'll notice that I check the back layer quite often. What happens is you have the, the bottom layer after I finished cutting out the line art, the top two layers are usually a pretty good clean cut. The bottom layer, I usually have a little bit of work to tidy it up afterwards. But that's no problem. We just go back over it. Using this method as well means that I can produce see three of these coasters at the same time right let's have a little look um what is the speed setting that you're cutting your stock Hegler generally has one speed uh, i'll look at mine to see what speed it runs at yeah basically you've got the two uh, different things with the Hegners. you've got variable speeds more expensive machine um and you've got the single speed uh this is a single speed so I don't even look or know what speed that I'm running at because it, it just has that one single speed. It's basically what I've used for the last 20 years. It's never, ne never had any sort of issue with it. Um, has it got it written on here somewhere? But basically it is the standard. Uh, mine is the uh, Hegner Multicut 2S. And it's the single speed machine, not the variable machine. Um, so you do get a variable speed uh, Hegner Multicut 2S, but more expensive. And for what I do and for the way I work, um, I, I, I never felt that it was important or relevant for me. So, yeah, I'm working uh, with the single speed that the machine has.
Okay, so it looks to me like the second eye is slightly larger to the way I've cut the hole. So we're just going to go back to the first eye just to make it a little bit larger, just to match it up. Just shows you how you adapt things as you go along. Blades, you can do finer detail, absolutely. Uh, I think that runs about 1500 max for the single speed. Here we are, 1500, I think. 1700 seems to be the constant I'm finding. There we are. So, uh, yeah, well, uh, you're probably right, Carl. My Hegner 2S is variable and the max on it is 1500. Yeah, I mean, the variable, great feature if you've got it. Um, so you can slow it right down if you if you want to if you need to I, I, I just think um, What can I explain? Um, it's it's kind of like with um, <laughs> It's the old thing isn't it ignorance is bliss I've because I've never used a variable speed I've never seen the need for me to, to, to have it. I can see some of the uses, you know, especially on some of the projects where not having it going quite as fast um, can be really useful but for me, because it's always been single speed that I've used, there we are. And the other thing as well is sometimes because it's that single speed and it is going at that speed, um, little things will happen. I, you, you just get used to covering up your mistakes. <laughs> I think that's the thing. You know, these are guidelines and that's literally what I would suggest they are. They're a guide. They guide you where you're going. But... I make plenty of mistakes and uh, sometimes for the for the better, sometimes for the worse, but you just do your best then to cover them up and incorporate them into the design that you're working on.
I think as well on my last comment with the uh, with the mistakes, with the things going wrong like that, I think that the carver will definitely relate to it because myself, that's the background I came from was love spoon carving and wood carving. And the, the mistakes, things not going exactly to plan is the, uh, that's the life of the wood carver. And if you're doing it on a daily basis, you just accept that things go wrong, mistakes happen, things don't go perfectly to plan and you just have to adapt and find a way of using whatever the issue is on that particular carving. And that's sometimes how we come up with new designs is by things going wrong and adapting accordingly. Uh, you're probably right. Oh, no, that's, uh, no comments on there, but um, yeah, that's basically what happens a lot with carving. You know, you have to adapt with whatever's going on. Another little technique just to highlight there that we use, because I know a few have said that you're, you're newer to scroll sawing. You'll see we've got plenty of wood there um, to hold on to. Sometimes, especially, um, I make a fair amount of jewellery, brooches, uh, necklaces, any any sort of jewellery, to be honest with you, out of wood. Uh, when I do it, quite often I use a much bigger piece of wood as maybe the bottom layer or something like that and mark several projects out at the same time. It allows you to keep your hands well away from the blade. It's good in terms of confidence. Um, it just makes it a little bit easier if you've got a larger piece of wood than a really tiny piece of wood where it's difficult to grip and also your hands are closer to the blade. Uh, what's that? Design and execution is always going to be an excellent exercise in problem solving. Yes, spot on, absolutely.
think if we did you read the Carver's last comment? Because if I think we go back to that one um, about design and execution. One thing I've always found when we design something new here, not always, but fairly frequently, the first time you make the item, you sort of how can I put it? Iron out all the issues. Yeah. So you 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 there'll be simple things like for instance, like we sand the back of that on the on the belt sander. So for instance, sometimes we we'll do a curve and it doesn't fit the machine. So we'll iron out those issues in the first time or the first couple of times that you make something. Um, sometimes you end up with two different designs, uh, and you'll use both. Um, and that's the sort of, it's, it, it is, it's a creative process, isn't it? That's why I recommend people doing their own designs, is because you learn things, you discover things, you find things as, you, as you're going along. Um, yeah, something. Well, it never ceases to surprise me how many people come into a workshop and they chat to you and they say, oh, I, I'm a carpenter. Yeah. Well, I couldn't do this work. Yeah. Maybe a carpenter, a joiner, and they say we couldn't do that. But I mean, they're they're doing the same thing because they're problem solving. Yeah. You know, you you've got to work out. You know, you've got to get it cut, everything right. Um, on that subject as well, we had a gentleman in, didn't we, in the, on the weekends? Um, I think it was was his name Richard Williams. I think his I name think was. So, yeah. Gentleman, um, some beautiful love spoons that he was making, and again, he was doing his own designs. <laughs> Um, he had a Hegner, he was cutting out on a Hegner, and he was designing and carving himself. Um, and it just shows, if you do have a go at designing and, if, and carving if he, yourself... If you had told me that he'd been making love spoons for 30 years, I would have said, oh, that's like can tell, by the way. He'd only been making them, apparently, for four years. That's yeah. Incredible. Um, but, but, as you said, fantastic. But he'd owned a scroll saw for 40 years. Yeah, well, it was and his so I think. I think. No, it was his, and he'd given it to his father or something. I think because he was explaining to me, he his father had had it. But it shows you, you know, if you've got that scroll saw in background, in terms of having a go at wood carving, yeah. go for it because it does it can add another dimension to what you're doing. Mm. The two things do go together really well. They're transferable skills, and it allows you to make all sorts of different things. And the other word, of course, is confidence. Absolutely, have a go. Yeah. You know, and that's the, and it's the same with the designing. Have a go. Don't worry if it comes out a bit of a disaster. I mean, as I said, originally this original image was not mine. However, the original image is no good in its in its form that it's drawn because it, it isn't line art. So you have to adapt that image to work as it is in the form of a coaster. Which is right, but there's another thing that comes into the equation. What I find is that <clears throat> whilst the third and fourth time you do something, it speeds up, I tend to get a little bit bored. <clears throat> so <clears throat> that's the other side to it. That's the Just other keep, side. Keep, keep so that's why we have a a variety of designs and of projects. Designs. Well, I, I, I would, I would back a lot of that up in terms of, for instance, um, we one of the most popular carvings we do is the Welsh dragon. Excuse me, and we do quite an elaborate dragon. And the first time that you carve it, wow, that took a long, long time to do. And then the second time, still taking you a long time to do, a long time to do because you are learning the carving as you're doing it. And about half a dozen, and you still. 
it's so much detail that you can't remember it all. Now, um, I can carve it differently because I can remember every single piece of detail. So when you're learning a carving, yeah, it does take a lot longer. But now when people say, oh, can I have a dragon on it? It's a little bit of a, I got to carve another dragon. So exactly. yeah, but that is, that's our job. That's what we do. So, you know, we carve the dragon. But if I carve one dragon, and we must have carved meadows of flowers, <laughs> um, you know, and so it does, sometimes it does get a little bit, um, I carved four more today, didn't I? A poppy, a daffodil, holly, and um, I think it was forget-me-nots. Yeah. Telling me it's optimized the computer. Oh, right, okay. Right. And what they meant or something, flowers and... Okay. Can you remember that? I don't remember that, no. You mentioned... What were the four things you mentioned now about flowers? Uh, we had to forget-me-nots and uh, holly leaves yeah, and... But what did that person say that they... Bir birth flowers, I think. Yeah, birth say, flowers. Yeah, I'd never come across that before, but... Um, Have you looked yeah, on the internet that's... yet? No, not yet. I haven't had a look at that one. Well, I, any, I think that's what it is. That, 
Hey? I wonder if anybody listened yeah, to Yeah, I don't know. Birth flowers, somebody flowers. mentioned. You know, you get birth stones. Yeah. But we've not heard of birth flowers. I haven't come across that myself. Bit of separating work to go, bit of an angle on the back because. Um, well, actually, I tell you something that happened to me today. Yeah, that didn't bottom blade wasn't in square, <laughs> wasn't in perfectly, and it caused me a real problem. Well, I tell you what's happening with me is because to accommodate the camera, I'm actually about what would you say about ten centimeters off square. So, you know, when you're scroll sorting... It doesn't help, yeah, you're not you, behind the You want to be, it's, it's a simple little thing that we don't even think of. Because yeah. I'm accommodating the camera to show you, yeah. I'm about 10 centimetres, about, about 5 centimetres, we'll say, off to the right. And I'm probably right eye dominant as well. So I'm not actually square on as I'm cutting. And one thing, if you want to be cutting correctly and well, you should be square on, which yeah. currently I'm not. I'm slightly off to the side because I'm accommodating the tripod behind me.
as well is that blade is definitely not cut in squid. So it's time. Well, it was time. Time think, for a new blade. It is time for a new blade. It was well, time. Well, do. Yeah. I've been using that blade. I was aware of it as it was going along. So what I'm just going to try and do. Let's have a little look. We're just going to try and separate these layers just to the side of the scroll. What so. you go? Going near the edge. What it is is stronger here. Yeah. 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 It's stronger there because it's. Go on. There it goes. Go right in. Right. right in the end, over. Let's go. Separate them out, so that's one, and then the other layer. Bump. That's, Real. that's how we should go. There we are. Simple little, simple little coaster. It's a bit, it's a bit rickety rackety in terms of As some Tony of the square. Would say just like that. Just like that. Um, yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit rickety rackety, but it doesn't really matter. That's the layer there as well. I'll, that's the bottom layer, so we'll have to go over that a little bit more. That's probably the best one for you to see. Um, the, top the, top the top layer, the top layer. The reason as well. Any of you looking at it and going, oh well, you know, you should be accurate. You should be absolutely spot on with it. Well, we're making handmade stuff. Yeah. So if you want perfect cut out everything absolutely spot on that's what we're competing against is the is the machine you know the machine made stuff the mass produced stuff yeah, so look at, the, look at the price we don't worry of, about you it made three yeah three you know, cutting that out yeah and that bot that it's, bottom it's, layer you can see that bottom layer you can see that blade is definitely due let's have a look at it for us it's a revolution yeah, absolutely. I'm just looking at that. Yeah, you can just see the teeth. They're just off center, just going as I'm looking. Oh, they're, yeah, I can really, I can see what's happening now. There's a slight bow and they're all off to the left hand side at the bottom. So that's why that bottom layer is a bit curly worthy. But there we are. Good fun. Hope you've enjoyed. Thank you for joining us. Um, any questions as well, remember to get in the comment section. Um, and all going well, we'll be back with more videos soon. But thanks again, hope you all have a fantastic week. All the best.